But let's now move on to wide receivers. And the wide receiver I am most intrigued to watch, uh, it's 1A, 1B with the next guy we're going to talk about, but McCole Hardman in the Chiefs' number two, number three receiver battle. I don't really need to spell out the upside that comes with being a key part of Mahomesian uh, aerial pie there. It's as good and delicious as it can be. Uh, but what I am really intrigued by, Nate Taylor came on our pod yesterday. We've been killing those beat writer interviews. And he's been he, over at The Athletic writing about how McCole Harmon's more refined, more mature, attacking practice in a new way. The light switch seems to really have gone on. That's great in practice. I want to see, I cannot wait to see, especially the 49ers versus the Chiefs this weekend. So we get our guys, Trey Lance, Trey Sermon, all that. And then we could also go watch on the other side, McCole Hardman and this Chiefs offense. I want to see it actually happening on the field. But, man, am I buying into it. Like, why not at round 9, 10 price right now? See if you can get this piece that could really ascend. What are your thoughts on Hardman, and, and what are you looking for with him in this Chiefs battle? Yeah, no, I'm super excited to see him ball out this season. He His rookie year was super encouraging. He, he was number one in the NFL in yards per reception, number one in the NFL in yards per target. He scored – a lot more touchdowns than than people realize in his first year. Basically, like when he was on the field, he was just running deep and catching touchdowns. He caught a touchdown on almost a fourth of his targets as a rookie, yeah. which is just insane. Um, but then his sophomore season, like he did take this step back. And that is definitely concerning that he couldn't carve out a role last season. Sammy Watkins really wasn't playing most of the time. And when yeah. he was, he wasn't a big part of the offense. He's gone now. There definitely is a path to the ceiling outcome from McCole Hardman in seasonal leagues. I'm not expecting him to be consistent enough to like trust him on a week to week basis. Like, I think it's going to be very difficult to predict which week is going to be the McCole Hardman like blow up week, but they're going to come this season. This guy is 99th percentile speed. He fits perfectly with what the chiefs are trying to do. And he has the least competition he's had in his entire career. So I, I do like him a lot for the upside. I like him a lot in best ball. I definitely think he has, like plenty of wide receiver one weeks in him this season, but it also won't surprise me if we see lots of like five point couple target weeks out of McCall Hardman. Yeah. I, I brought that up the inconsistency to Nate yesterday and he's like, yeah, that's totally fair. I think you, you should expect that. The one thing he pushed me on was saying, if you look at the, the Super Bowl defensive plan from the, yeah. the, uh, the bucks there, they just focused on take out Kelsey, take out Hill. Let's make somebody else beat us. Right. And that, that those opportunities, as long as McColl keeps playing in camp, are going to go to him. Yeah. And while he couldn't do that last year, Nate said he just sees a different receiver this year that's winning those one-on-ones. He's going to see a ton of one-on-one coverage. You can't really keep the safety over him when you got mm-hmm. Tyreek on the other side. So he thinks he's going to be beating people deep quite often and quite regularly. That is, of course, if he takes that step. Now, let's see right. it on the field. It's happened in practice, apparently, every single day. Now let's see it on the field. I wouldn't be shocked to see him catch like a long ball in one of these preseason games. And then his draft price just goes yeah. up two rounds. So yeah. I'm going to keep trying to sneak him in before Saturday in these drafts. Cause I'm buying it uh, based on what Nate was saying. It sounds like he is yeah. really taking but that step. The bottom line is, is you want pieces of this offense. So I'm, yeah. I'm definitely all aboard. Anytime I can get a piece of this offense, even if it's Daryl Williams, Derek McKinnon, like the last round, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to feel pretty good about it. Exactly. And I guess that lends itself to the number three battle, which we don't have to dive in too much. But according to Nate yesterday, Byron Pringle is kind of emerging Mm -hmm. as that number three. So talking about late pieces to add, he said Pringle and he said even Robinson like has his role in the red zone. He's got great chemistry with Mahomes on broken plays. He said take stabs on all these guys late because they all could have some blow up days, especially with the offensive line being better this year. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, Mahomes has that extra second to let the the progressions get that much deeper or Tyreek to get that second to get deep. It's going to be a fireworks show. It already, always it already is, but it could be just that much crazier. Yeah. Yeah. The, and we did, we didn't mention Clyde Edwards Lair in the, in the sophomore um, category, but there was no guy that burned me worse than Clyde Edwards Lair last season. I drafted him, I think sixth overall in like four out of my six high stakes Fan, I lost thousands of dollars from Clyde Edwards Hilaire last season. Asshole, but yeah. I, I will not give up hope that the, the situation for him is the same or better this year than last year. The only difference is you're getting him like two rounds later. So I, I think there's a lot of upside with him as well. Every piece of this offense, I'm pretty intrigued by. Yeah, I'm with you 100% too. I, I, I was taking him fourth overall over like Derrick Henry and Kamara. It was horrible. Like you know, People are going to shut this off now when they hear that. I was all in on the Andy Reid workhorse, and that still exists this year, the upsides there. I guess I'm only a little concerned. Nate brought up Jarek McKinnon and how impressive yeah. he's been. He was saying there's a decent chance McKinnon becomes a, a third down back uh, pretty regularly, which would cap the ceiling a little bit. But he did say, he mentioned the same breath, Hilaire has also impressed 
as a receiver too. So we'll see how that looks. That'll be an interesting thing to check as well. You're right. You know, when that first team offense is out there, is Hilaire in for every single snap or are they getting cute and mixing people in? Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see that one as well. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh.